Hello guys, uh, uh, this is Mr. Eleshmi and this is XS1 class, physics class. It's so good to be back here. I'm happy to see you guys once again, to be able to study online again. So the last time we were here together, we discussed about uh, electrical energy, it was about power, and how to calculate the cost of what electricity consumed. How to calculate energy consumed. So we talked about the work done, uh, which is what's giving us what uh, work done. We give, we give the expressions. Uh, for work done, which is what uh, IVT, the product of what current uh, potential difference and the what and time, and we give other expressions by which you can use your Ohm's law using the uh, your the formula for Ohm's law to express other what expressions for what work done. And then we went to power, which is the rate at which what uh, energy is being what uh, consumed. Work done over what time, which will now give us what uh, product of what current times what potential or difference, which can also be expressed for that using the relation of the what. Uh, Ohm's law and uh, solve the question, and we calculated how to uh, how to what calculate the cost of like energy consumed uh, per hour. That is one kilowatt uh, uh, hour, which is what one thousand watts. So we discussed all that in the in the previous class. Uh, but this week we'll be looking at another thing entirely, uh, which is also about current and is is what a safety device, or a safety device and uh, detecting faults in the uh, in current. Safety device and detecting faulty current. Uh, basically, when you just hear safety device, you shouldn't be looking at uh, protective measures. Uh, the protective measures taken uh, for something not to get damaged. Uh, the, uh, the protective measures you've taken for to go to get uh, uh, something not to get lost or protect something. So we are looking at that in a, in a current and also how to detect fault. Uh, the instruments used in detecting fault. So we'll be considering all that. Uh, and at the end of the class, I believe we'll be able to achieve it. So let me share with you with our listener. Objective. I'd like to share with you with our lecture objective. So this is week four. This is one class physics, safety device uh, and detecting faults and current. Safety device and detecting faults and current. So this is our learning objective. Our immediate objective says that at the end of the lesson, students should be able to explain what safety device means. Yes, obviously we can we should be without even uh going further into the topic, we should be able to explain what what safety device means that those things that we have been put in place for a system not to get damaged, for a system not to be overloaded. When we overload it, that is not to be over, overcharged too much current. And there are some devices that, could, that can't take more than, uh, let's say, 10 ampere. And I told you the unit of uh, current is what ampere. There are some devices that cannot take more than 10 ampere. Some can't take more than 5 ampere. Some can't take more than 2 ampere. So if you, are, if you are charging a device that cannot take more than 2 ampere with a 5 ampere, Obviously, you know this, the system will be what will be damaged, it will be overloaded, so it will damage. So what are the things to, 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 to put in place so that it will not exceed the required what, uh, current for, your, what, for the device, the, the required charge? What are you not going to do? Some device you might not know, and you can just overcharge uh, a device. So what are, there are some preventive measures, the safety, that's what we call the safety device in place, so as not to what, overload or damage or what, a system. So we look at uh, explain the use of electric fuse. Electric fuse is one of the safety devices uh, used uh, in a circuit. So we'll be taking these electric fuse. There are other devices used, but we'll focus on what electric fuse and explain how to detect faults in what electric what uh, circuits. You know, I told you when we have a circuit, there are two types of circuits. We have an open circuit and a what a closed circuit. In a closed circuit, uh, current flows all through the circuit. In case there's a, there's a there's a bulb attached at the end of the circuit, if it's in a closed circuit. When there's a passage of current, it flows through the circuit to give what light or current to, what, to the bulb, gives light to the bulb. But in an open circuit, current doesn't flow or through. There's a space, there's a gap that what bridges what the flow of current to what uh, connecting uh, from one point to another in the what in the circuit. So when there's a, a brick or when there's a, 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 a bridge in the circuit, now how do you detect the what that falls? When there's a, when there's an open uh, circuit occurs, a system that's a what a closed circuit, all of a sudden it becomes an open circuit that this current is not flowing at the end of the uh, probably at the end of the circuit, the bulb expected to what give light uh, and is not what uh, producing what uh, is not illuminated, it's not producing what light. So you're like how do you now detect the force? What is the instrument used? They just uh, open a circuit, you just you have to detect uh, where the fault is what uh, is coming from. That's where we put what detects faults in a what electric circuits. So let's go to what safety device means according to the notes here. Yes, electrical appliances, we don't know what appliances is. Usually you have maximum power specification for safe operation. Yes, like I said earlier, every electrical appliance, your TV, uh, your, 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 your radio, your phone, everything has a, what, a specification. Like uh, at this limit, your, your current cannot exceed this limit. The voltage cannot exist in this limit. So they all have what specifications. We don't charge a, a, a battery of 1.5 volts with, with, uh, with 10 volts. 
it's going to damage it. It's, it's overpowers it. It will damage the system. So every appliance has what what they are what own what uh, specifications. So you have to monitor all these specifications so as not to damage your what your circuits. So if the power supply they are ending not if the power supply rises above the maximum value, if they are supplying the power or, or charge above the specification of what are. Uh, uh, the appliance, the appliance may be overrated and damaged. It's overloaded, overrated, and what and gets damaged. So when you when you when you overcharge a system beyond its what specification, it gets what damaged. So several safety devices have been made to prevent what such damage. In order to not to have a, a damage system due to overcharge, then there are some preventive measures that have been what are put in place. Are these preventive measures that they call what the safety devices are uh, the safety devices? So let's go. So uh, we look at our fuse. I told you one of the safety devices we use is the electric fuse. And we are all familiar with what electric fuse is. We might have come across, this is what an electric fuse is. If you look at uh, every socket, you will find an electric fuse. If you are, if you are chance to have open a, a socket before, or any appliance, you'll find a, what, a fuse in it. So this is an electric fuse, this is a diagram. So let's go through it. Let me explain uh, the electric fuse. A electric fuse, a fuse is one of the devices we used as what safety devices in the circuit I said earlier. Is one of the devices we use I and mean, what's as a preventive measure so that a system or a circuit will not what get damaged. A fuse consists of what this is what is made of. A fuse consists of the short length of thin conducting wire with a low mention point. I look at if you look at the what look at the wire in between uh, you see your what your, your what thin wire. This is it. That's the wire we're talking about. So it consists of a short length of thin conducting wire with a low mention point. When the maximum current exceed uh this is the, the, the duty, the, the activities of what a fuse, how it works. So when the maximum current is exceeded in the circuit, when the maximum current is exceeded in the circuit, for example, a circuit, a circuit of like, a, that's supposed to take a current of what? Two ampere. You need a fuse of what? Two ampere to regulate it. That is any current above, uh, any current above the two ampere, if it's going to pass through the system, we break what uh, the fuse and leaves the, what, the circuit what open. We break this, the, the what? The fuse. It's a preventive measure. The fuse will get what broken so that the circuit will not what damage. It doesn't damage, it's the fuse that what break the circuit. That is current will not what flow through this if through the fuse. But if, if it's a if it's a current what within the range of what zero uh, two ampere, it flows through the fuse and it doesn't break it because the fuse can still take it what a two ampere is just an example. I'm just citing as an example here. So it doesn't it protects what uh current above what the specification of what a fuse of a circuit rather. So if it's above uh, that the specification, the fuse will break. So look at the note here. When the maximum current, when the maximum current is exceeded, when the maximum current is exceeded in the circuit, the fuse melts and the circuit is what broken. The fuse what melts and the circuit is what broken, leaving the circuit what open. That is the current flowing, the over the overcharged current coming in will not be able to get into what into the circuit in order to what damage it. So the circuit, the fuse what breaks the circuit into two, leaving it to what open. Uh, this prevent damage to what electrical appliances. These are one of the safety devices we use in protecting our what electrical devices. If they are, if these things are not put in place, then we have to be what renewing our what electrical appliances a lot, a lot, a lot of times. That's why you see probably your electricians or your electricians comes to the house and just what probably have a damage in your socket and just what change your fuse. Because the current coming, when there's an overcharge from the source, comes into the house, there are some preventive measures that, to, that puts in place. Probably your, 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 your socket breaker just gets burnt, your, your socket gets burnt, so that it's not affect other what devices in the, what, in the house. So, fuse are rated according to the ability of their conductive wire to absorb electric current without what melting. Fuse are rated, that is their program, according to their ability of, what, of their what conducting wire to absorb electric current without what melting. If a current that is what or in line with the specification of the fuse passes through it, it doesn't break, it doesn't melt. It's what allows the what flow of current monitoring what it's just like a monitor. That is okay, don't come in. If you are too higher, it breaks you so that you don't damage the what the circuit. For example, a fuse rated 0.5 ampere. Take note. I've already told you that's that's what your current is measured in what ampere. If fuse rated 0.5 ampere as a as lower melting point than one rated at what 15 ampere. Yes, it has a lower melting point than what uh one with what 15 ampere. 15 ampere can take a current of what 14 ampere from zero uh, from any degree up to what 15 ampere, up to what 15 ampere without what melting. It will take uh, current up to what 15 ampere to allow to flow through it without what melting. 
but a fuse of 0 0.5 ampere cannot take more than what 0 0.5 watt ampere. If it takes 0 0.6, it's going to what melt. It will break the what the circuit. That's why I say a fuse of 0 0.5 ampere has lower melting point than one rated of 15 watt ampere. You can see the difference now. It has a lower melting point than that of what that can take more watt charge. A fuse rated 0 0.5 gets burnt. If it is allowed to take in an electric current greater than what is 0 0.5, just like I said, explain. A fuse of 0 0.5 watt ampere gets burnt. If it is allowed to take a watt, uh, if it's allowed to take an in electric current greater than what is 0 0.5. If any charge, if the fuse is what rated under suspension of what 0 0.5 ampere, if it takes anything greater than 0 0.5, it will what break. It will what melt, leaving the circuit to be what open. Current will not flow into the what to the circuit in order to damage it. It protects. It's like a, a, a security guard that monitors the what goes in and what 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 flows in. So it says if a fuse rated 0 0.5 gets burnt, you see a fuse rated 0 0.5 ampere gets burnt if it is allowed to take in electric current greater than what 0 0.5 ampere. Please take note. So it's specification matters on the what fuses our what and our safety device. I told you earlier. Uh, this is what uh, the picture of a what uh, image of a what uh, a fuse. Whenever you see this in your house or in any appliances, you know that is what it is a fuse. So let us go to the next thing. Look at this example. Take your touch light, your touch light, uh, your what your touch light. The lamp is rated a touch light lamp is rated what 0 0.2 ampere. That is the specification. I've told you about specification that uh, uh, what it can take at uh, the maximum what current it can take is what 0 0.2 ampere. It can be protected from burning out as a result of short circuiting by providing it with what is 0 0.2 amp fuse what wire you provide your what you look at the specification of your circuit and you provide it what with equal what uh fuse wire 0 0.2 ampere if the foreign if the current current flowing into the lamp is greater than 0 0.2 so you have you safeguarded your what your touch light circuit now with a what is 0 0.2 what uh, 0 0.2 watt amp the lamp is what rated 0 0.2 amp so you have a fuse of what is 0 0.2 watt amp that is you don't want anything greater to what burn your lamp to damage your lamp. So you safeguard it with what? With 0 0.2 watt fuse wire. If the front going into the lamp is greater than 0 0.2 ampere, the fuse wire gets burnt, leaving the what lamp safe. Leaving the what lamp safe. But without the fuse wire, if the current is greater than 0 0.2 ampere is coming, it will blow out the lamp. It will what? Blow out the lamp. Damage the what? The lamp. So as not to get damaged, that's why we have what? This safety device. That's why fuse is what? One of the safety devices we are considering. This circuit is just what open. You know, when I told you about open circuit, it doesn't have a what a confused what current flow. It is a breakage, there's a bridge who doesn't give current to the what to the whole circuit. The flow of current ceases and the lamp is prevented from what getting burnt. The lamp is what the lamp is what saved. What melt is the what the fuse, the protector, the guard, the security guard, the fuse. So you can know this explanation, you'll be able to what explain for that. So let me give you another example. Look at this. Household equipment are covered with what insulation, what material to this protects the user of what such equipment from getting what electric shock. So this is another example of what safety device, just to uh, buttress on what safety device. Your appliances are what insulated. You can look at your kitchen, your 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 kettle, the cover you behold it is and what is covered with a plastic, insulated or plastic, so that you don't get what electric shock. So these are that plastic is what a safety device. Just to butter buttress the what explanation on what safety what uh, device. You can see your your pots they all have a plastic around them. Is a what an insulator that doesn't allow the flow of what current to work to prevent you getting what electric what uh, shock. And look at your iron. Everything is not made with what iron. They are covered around with what uh, uh, plastics to what safeguard you. So these are what safety device. You can look at your cars. They are safety belts. We call them safety belts to safeguard you to get or uh, injured in case there's, an, uh, there's, a, there's a case of what accident. So these are safety devices. So we're talking about that of what electric what circuit. So we'll move on to. Detecting faults in electric, how do you detect faults in electric circuits? Uh, how do you detect faults in what electric circuit? In case there's a what, there's a what, there's a there's an open circuit. And then you start wondering, what is going on in this circuit? Why is it not why why is current not flowing through? Probably at the end of the circuit, there's a lamp that should be what give light and just uh, on the switch and it's not producing what I like the What is going on? So let's go through the note. When there is a fault in a circuit, there will be no current in the what circuit. That's what I told you. There will be an open circuit, current doesn't flow or through, it breaks along the line. It doesn't have a complete what uh, circuit. An electric bulb connected in the end of the circuit will not give light. Like I said earlier, if you have your, your if there's a brick in your touch light, if there's a brick or an open circuit in your touch light lamp, if you switch it on the way you switch it on, it will not produce the lamp will not what give light, showing that what, there's an not open what circuit. There's a what fault in the what circuit of the what of the what touch light. Faults can occur 
what can occur in the circuit as a result of what blown fuses. I told you when the fuses was, has melted, probably due to what's over, over, overcharged, leading to a what short circuit or a broken wire in the burn out of lamp, leading to a not open circuit. When there's a, a fault in the circuit, it leads to what open circuit, and this fault could be due to what, like you said, blown fuses. Like first, what is a melt, so it can leave the what, uh, uh, leave the what circuit what open, no flow of water. Current, no total what or overall flow of current in the what in the circuit. So what we use in detecting faults in what electric circuit is what uh, we call it tester. You all have heard about tester. You've all heard about tester. You've seen your electrician, your 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 people that fix your TVs come with what tester. This is, let me show you the image of a tester. So this is one you are familiar with, and this is this is called a what a continuity tester. This is the one you are familiar. We are familiar. This is the tester. They all have this. this we, we explain them same. This, them are uh, the two the same way. So just to, to use to what detect fault. We use a continuity tester to do what to detect fault in the what in the circuit. When uh, there's no flow of current, when there's an open circuit, you don't just because uh, your TV is not giving on light now. All of a sudden, you just open its broadway and start touching everywhere. No, no, no. You just all start start removing what uh, fuses all around. No, you have to use your tester. To test if uh, there's a there's a point where the current is not flowing. If you put on your, your your board or your circuit board and start using tester, most will, some will give light, and those that doesn't give light, uh, this is the light that indicates that okay, current gets here, current gets here, but it doesn't get, give this light. It shows that uh, there's a plus problem with that what with that point on your what circuit. That is where the what breakage has happened from the source of light down to this point. There has been flow of current, but at this point, current did not flow. So that is where the fault is what coming from. That's why you use a testing, a, a, a continuity tester that what, with, uh, the, these are the specification. I will give you what it is made of, but it gives light to show that what current is what flowing and where there's a, a break or a open circuit, it doesn't what, uh, give light. So let us explain the continuity tester. To detect faults in the circuit, we use a continuity tester, like I said earlier. So the instrument is used to test whether a circuit is continuous or broken at a certain point. Like I said, like I told you earlier, at the point when you, from the source, when, you, uh, when there's a, a fault in your, your system, a circuit from the source, uh, there's light uh, current flowing from the source, and you start using your continuity tester to test, and it gives light at this point, give light at this point. At the point where there doesn't give light, that is where there's what open circuit. That is where you start detecting your what are. That's where you know that uh, the, the, there's an open circuit. The fault comes from what this certain what point. That's what it said here. The instrument is used to detect whether a circuit is continuous or broken at a certain point. It can be constructed by what. A, a 1.5 volt cell and an electric what bulb. Uh, this is the bulb that I told you about. This is a bulb. It gives a bulb. So this one, this is a bulb here too. That's the bulb. So this is how it works. And uh, two end points A and B. Two end points what A and B. Their circuit is completed at the end, at, and the lamp lights up. If you are connecting it to what one point on the board and the other points are two points A and B. These are points. You can see one point here. Please see it here and another point here. So if it's a complete circuit, the light what it gives light. If it's a complete circuit, the uh, two lens are pointing. The circuit is completed. If it's a complete circuit, the light what the lamp gives what light. But if it's not a complete circuit, it doesn't what gives light. So that's just the basic understanding about what uh, 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 about uh, what a continuous tester. Look at this one. When A B are continuous, continuous, the tester we are connected to the board across a faulty component of a system or an equipment. The light, the lamp will not what light up. If you are putting the, your tester at the point on the system. The light will not what light up. The lamp, or rather, will not what light up. If there's a fault at that, at that point, the lamp will what, not what light up. I said that earlier. So if there's a, if there's no fault, if it's a what, look at it, will not light up, showing that there's a break in that circuit. And when A B are connected to a good component, the lamp will what light up, showing that the, uh, there's no fault in that what that certain point. So in this way, the tester is able to detect what fault in it to detect a what faulty apparatus. So that's how you detect uh, faults in electric current or electric circuit, uh, the flow of current, where there's a break in what? The flow of electric current in the circuit. So that's how you detect it. So we've come to the end of the class. Please take note of these things, what a safety device means, fuse, how you explain the fuse, and the specification of what every what fuse, and how to detect faults in what? Uh, how to detect faults in what? In current or electric, uh, in electrical what? Uh, circuits. Uh, so, uh, we have come to the end of the class. I thank you and I, uh, I hope you, you understand. I believe you've understood everything we've talked about. I believe you've understood it. So if you have further questions, you can use uh, the other platforms on WhatsApp uh, and uh, our contact is on, my contact is on WhatsApp and you can easily reach me on WhatsApp also. And I've sent questions earlier on the lesson notes, please. 
try to reach further, get your textbook for what uh, better understanding, watch the video and over again, compare it to your notes. And I believe you have the better understanding of safety device and how to detect what's in what and uh, current or in secret. Uh, thank you very much. I appreciate it.